Pike County Physical Court is called to order. Madam Clerk, have a roll call. Judge Rutherford. Present. Master Anderson. Here. Master Johnson. Here. Master Murphy. Here. Master Robinson. Here. Master Dotson is absent. Master Harris. Here. We have a quorum. We'll now have Pledge of Allegiance, led by Magistrate Murphy, a veteran. <coughs> Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In your packet, you have the minutes of the October 21, 14 meeting. I have uh, reviewed those. Jeannie's reviewed them. They are correct as a, to our memory. And uh, do we have a motion to approve? Motion. Motion, Magistrate Murphy, Secretary Magistrate Johnson. Madam Clerk, have a roll call, please. Master Anderson? Yes. Master Johnson? Master Murphy? Yes. Master Robinson? Yes. Master Harris? Yes. Judge Rutherford? Yes. Today we have the Thanksgiving dinner after the court meeting in the courtroom here. And we want to thank those who, who prepared it, uh, Bobby Mullins and Solid Waste and Jeannie and everybody else that's been involved in it. Uh, I, a lot of people have been sampling a lot of stuff that comes in. I, I saw Bobby Branham carrying a plate of something around. So they always have good food. So uh, every, everybody in the courtroom is invited to that, uh, besides our, all of our employees in the, in the building. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna, we will go ahead, I've seen that John Doug Hayes, assistant county attorney came in, so we were gonna put that off uh, a little, but uh, we will go ahead and get the, the public comments all out of the way before we go into closed session. And I will explain why we're going into closed session as soon as we complete the public comment. So if, uh, if uh, Mr. Stoneacre, if you're here, if somebody's with you, come around to the podium and uh, make your statements. That's, that's, and if you have any questions, we will try to get you an uh, uh, answer uh, of, of, the, uh, of any questions that you may have. Uh, thank you, Judge Rutherford, for uh if you would, we're on, we're on Pike TV and they require the microphone be used. And, uh, the, I'll thank you again then since <laughs> I have a... I, I heard for, you the other time and thank you for the two thank yous. All right, <laughs> for uh, taking time to listen to us. I've been requested by uh, Don McCoy and his sister, uh, Judy McCoy and their mom, Fern McCoy, concerning a road that was put in the county system in 1985. R. McCoy Road near Zebulon, and I have the uh, orders, a copy of the orders anyway here, that indicated that was uh, one of the probably 30, 35, no, probably about 55 roads put in the county system, and this was particularly uh, 1578 Arnold McCoy Road, and looks like it's uh, 1781, and it's considered to be left fork of Bevins Branch, also known as R. McCoy Road. Uh, it appears that two, two things. Uh, since 1985, that's 29 years, I uh, don't believe that it's ever been maintained. And number two, there is a, two other houses in this area, and there's a, a, a second road that comes off Zebulon, comes to a T. If you go left-handed, you can go up to Fern McCoy's property. Right-handed, you can go to the other two houses there. So there, there's a, two excesses. Uh, to go to Fern McCoy's property, you go across a bridge that Arnold McCoy put in many years ago. And the other, and we have a map here. We, okay, here it is. We have a map showing where the other, uh, the other uh, road is. 
So there's, a, there's a team. Mr. Stonebaker, if you look up on the monitor, there's some pictures here. If it better describe what you're talking about. Oh, okay. Go back and let him see the other right. pictures, Dan. I think that's the garage here, isn't it? Yes. All this, right. This is our driveway. All right. Pretty short. All right. That goes to, uh, is yes. that the one to the, to the right? All right, if you go go past that garage, that goes up across the bridge that Arnold McCoy put in and goes up to Fern McCoy's uh, house. And there's a T, I think you can see the beginning of it. Yeah, to the right. Yeah, to the right. It goes up to the other two houses there. So our request is that uh, the county road, uh, since 1985, it's not been maintained, uh, be considered abandoned and there is a access road to the other two houses uh, as shown to the, uh, at the bottom of the picture there. Mr. Stonehaker, the, uh, they are a statutory procedure that, you, that, that we have to follow. Right. If the county attorney and the uh, road commissioner uh, both would be involved in this and we would follow the same procedure and I guess that if you have, you have a copy of that statute? Uh, yes, uh, I have a couple of statutes. Uh, the one about the abandonment, that's in KRS 178-116. And then the procedure looks like is 178-070. Uh, so we have a couple of statutes here. So I think that, unless there are any questions, that would conclude our remarks. And again, we appreciate the time to uh, to speak to you Mr. folks. County Attorney, if you want to go first or the uh, Road Commissioner. I'd like to hear from the uh, Road Commissioner. Never been on this road in my life. I've seen the photos of the rest of the court and I'd like to hear what the Road Commissioner has to say. Well, over there at that, uh, their drive, there's uh, Fern's house and there's two other residents there that use that uh, road. So, you know, uh, we just have to go through the procedures of taking it out like any other road we've had taken out. Is everybody in agreement there on the road? I asked a question. Do you all have a petition with the other two residents signed? No. No, we do not. No. Okay. That we do have a copy of a map we could provide uh, uh, Mr. Hatcher since he's closer. <laughs> Judge, while he's providing that uh, copy of the map, if I may, uh, during the time I've been associated with county government and um, during the time of my knowledge, this court has never taken a road out of the county system unless all of the uh, property owners along the road agree that it be taken out. Uh, uh, the road commissioner informed me yesterday that there were uh, three residents served by this road and that uh, and that uh, we don't have a petition from the other two. We've, we've now got a petition for one. Uh, I'd, I have no idea about the maintenance of the road. I don't dispute, Phil, what you say or, uh, about that. I just don't know. Uh, but the only thing I know is if this uh, court follows its standard procedure, it will require that the others who live along this road agree because Mr. Hatcher has just told the court that they're utilizing this road for ingress and egress, and that's my understanding. Now, in talking with Phil yesterday uh, about this matter, he says, well, they have another way in and out. I don't know about that, and I, you know, I, I take your word that they do. I don't know how good that is or how bad it is for that matter, but right. that's where we are. Uh, the, this court is under no obligation to start jumping through the hoops because one resident along the road has asked us to do so. 17807 discontinuance of county roads, in fact, says the fiscal court may direct any county road to be discontinued. So it's, it's not a shell, it's not mandatory. So that's what uh, the county attorney's office knows about okay. it. One final comment, uh, Frank knows about this. Just a portion of this road we're asking to be abandoned, that was the section from the T that goes to the other two houses. It comes from, from Zebulon down, probably uh, uh, 75 feet, and then it goes to a T. Uh, to the right goes to the two houses. Uh, that's not Firm's property. 
and then on across the bridge that uh, Arnold put in many years ago and then goes up to uh, uh, Fern McCoy's property. So it's just basically a portion of this. So anyway, that's, unless there's any other questions. I, I do have a which, which portion is it, Phil, that you wanna, if it comes down, I see it coming off of the main road down and then around the curve and then it looks like it crosses the bridge there. Is that where it comes to a T? No, the T is before that bridge. Yeah. Okay. They're wanting to take out the portion you see coming from your left down there because there is another gradual approachment that, that was put in years ago whenever, and I think maybe Arnold did it, I don't know, uh, like they show on this map. And uh, it is something we'll have to uh, go through the procedures and see, you know. What do we need? We need a petition with those other two uh, people signing the petition. Right, and I, you know, it's something we can look at and talk to the other residents uh, uh, about putting this this uh, other approach in and closing that one off, you know. Sure, are they sure. going to, uh, Phil, are they going to still use this or are they going to take that driveway out? No, we're going to still use it. And Mr. Road Commissioner, would you, uh, uh, would <coughs> you put this off to the next meeting? Would you have time to get with the, the folks over there and see. Right, well, we'll give, uh, uh, give them the paperwork, see if they wanna go, or I'll, <clears throat> I'll take the paperwork to the other residents and see if they wanna sign. Ever help Don and Phil wanna do. Usually we let the ones that's taking it out get the signatures and notarize, you know, have it notarized that they agree to take it out. And if don't, we have a hearing before, and if anybody comes and objects to it or agrees to it, that's fine. I've done a couple of those hearings. Nobody ever objects because uh, what we do to short circuit the situation, we get the, all the people along the road to agree before we even start the process. So nobody, nobody's around to object. Right. Then we post it to three local businesses close to the area to uh, let the people know that do we have an understanding that you will continue to look into it about a, a, a new new way in? Right. And a petition signed by the two other property owners? Right. Don't Ecker, you have any further questions? No, again, we appreciate the time that the okay. fiscal court has given us. Any time you want to come before the court. One. Oh, Don has one yes, thing to I say. I got one comment. When the flood hit over at Zeppelin, I asked the county to come over and help us, and I had rented a piece of equipment because all the stuff got jammed underneath the bridge, and I was told at that time <coughs> that that was a private driveway, that the county could not come down in there. And for the 28 years, we've maintained that driveway. Thank you. We'll, we'll be glad to give it consideration and take a look at it. All right. Thank you. We're going to go into closed session to discuss a lease to Scott Fork. Uh, as you're aware, we have EQT there, this other company. Uh, this lease could, could lead to a large number of jobs. We have a confidentiality agreement signed by myself and this corporation. And uh, the leasee's name will not be revealed. The lease would have to be approved by economic development. And I think, Mr. County Attorney, transportation had to prove that also. That's correct, Your Honor. That's in accordance with the terms of uh, Pike County's le or, uh, deed uh, on Scott Fork. Uh, we have to get b uh, both Economic Development, the Dep Department of Transportation to sign off on that. And then, Your Honor, as, uh, as we've gone through before with regard to RCC Big Show, uh, um, 
no public announcement or proclamation can be made with regard to this matter uh, until KIDFA has had a chance to uh, act upon it, assuming this company wants to apply for uh, tax incentives. I think I've correct, stated that correctly, John. Uh, Mr. Carlton, is there anything else we can say? There's not much we can say, but so Mr. Harris, we will go into closed session. Judge, I, I noticed Neil Smith here. Is it, it, would it be possible for us to go ahead and take care of whatever issue he's got so he can get on his way and, and uh, we don't have to hold him here while we're uh, in executive no session? Or problem. Is Neil, I'm sorry. We need to get you back to a law practice so you can make money. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and these other lawyers realize that. So what we need, uh, Mr. County Attorney, would, would you explain that you have worked and had meetings with the Board of Education and with, with, with Neil? And uh, would you and, and Mr. Harris, an attorney, can assist you also? All right. Thank you. I don't need all the assistance I can get today, Judge. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Neil and I have discussed this on two separate occasions, and uh, what it is, it's the majestic school property. Um, I think most of the members of the court know exactly where that is. Um, uh, that is no longer being used uh, as a school. The Board of Education, I think, wants to, uh, uh, to utilize the property, maybe sell the property. I don't know what their plans are, but it's their property. However, it's in the name of Pike County. It was placed there many years ago in order to finance uh, uh, school construction over there at Majestic. It's, it was a bonding arrangement. And under the law, and I've, I've researched it, uh, uh, Mr. Smith's been kind enough to give me uh, a lot of that research to look at. Even looked at a lawsuit down in uh, Floyd County, the city of Prestonsburg, uh, wanted to claim a, a, a school down in, in the city of Prestonsburg after the bonds were paid. The court has held, and there's, there's uh, appellate court authority to this effect, uh, that, uh, uh, that, that we would hold that property in trust until such time as the bonds are paid. They've been paid now, and contractually we have an obligation to reconvey that uh, property. Uh, we'd like to hang on to it, Neil, but uh, I think you got us under the law, but that's all I can uh, tell you about that. Uh, that's for Mr. Johnson's benefit <laughs> up in Longport on the situation we got with the school board up there. Uh, my first inclination was, uh, uh, Mr. Johnson and the rest of the magistrates, was that, uh, that we made a trade with Majestic Property for the property at Longport. <laughs> Till uh, the esteemed county attorney brought me the case of in Prestonsburg, the city of Prestonsburg, uh, which stated the, and the case said that you had to sign the property back over. So then I was uh, talking to Mr. Smith and I said, uh, I hope you all helped that property at Longport in trust for the Pike County Physical Court. <laughs> <laughs> Since uh, we have a, a problem and a situation up there that needs to be resolved. We had attempted to resolve it through, uh, as you were, through the severance tax, till our legislators decided to go in a different direction and uh, tied our hands on severance tax. Uh, could only be used uh, for economic de development. So uh, we still got hanging out there, counselor, <laughs> yes, sir, for we the do. school board, this situation. Uh, what I think we're asking today, the court to authorize me to sign this. I would like to have a meeting with the county attorney and with you and the superintendent before I sign this in regard to uh, finding out <laughs> what we can do in regard to this situation that we have on Long Fork. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not that much concerned or needed, neither is Magistrate Johnson. We're concerned, but we're not that much concerned about the Virgie situation, since we understand that they have a, provo a proposed buyer for that property. Uh, I'm talking about for the swimming pool, and the Correct. swimming pool would still be available to the general public, would be not operated by or owned by the county. But we are certainly interested in resolving this situation. 
they are a lawsuit pending in regard to the severance tax issue. Uh, we don't know uh, what uh, that will be until that's resolved. And uh, we have the, attorney, the county attorney's office and the attorney, Mr. Kaplan, in, uh, in Louisville, who is representing the physical court. So we don't know. So, if, <laughs> so you got the microphone. I'm, well, well, I really wasn't prepared to discuss the Jeff Johnson property today, I, although I can. But and, and as John Doug knows, I represented the city of Prestonsburg in that lawsuit years ago. Where I'm sorry, I represent the Floyd County Board of Education, where the city of Prestonsburg tried to claim ownership of that property. And of course, what happened here in 1972? Boards of Education throughout Kentucky could not issue bonds. You had to convey the property to the fiscal court. The fiscal court issued the bonds. The boards of education then I would was pay here for the at bonds. that time. Yes, sir. I was the and, chief and so exam. that's why we have this situation where the property is in the name of the fiscal court, but it's it's actually the property of the board of education. When those bonds were retired, uh, n nobody at the central office realized that they then needed to get a deed from the fiscal court back to the board of education, and that that's why I'm here today. Uh, the, we have had a lot of discussion, of course, with you and John Doug, and uh, I think Mr. Wagner, even when he was superintendent. Talked to Mr. Wagner, and I've had and now Mr. Lester. Twice I've talked to Mr. Lester. Right, and they would very much like to to sell that property to you, not taking into account the value of the improvements on the property that were placed there by the fiscal court. Uh, how that happened, I don't know. Uh, and nobody's been able to figure that out. There wasn't a lease, there wasn't a conveyance, but there's a really nice uh, building there, as you know, a senior citizen center and, and some other improvements. Uh, but again, the, the State Department of Education requires us to appraise property and, and sell it. We can't give it away. Uh, and that's all I know to tell you. I, uh, and and they, they, they appraised it for, uh, a value of the real estate only. They did not take into account any imp any improvements that the county had placed on the property. Uh, I'm not even sure when that building was built, uh, but uh, again, I really I, I really don't have any authority from the Board of Education to discuss the status of that. We're just trying, to, we've declared this majestic property a surplus and uh, we have an interested buyer and that, that's, that's- That's a majestic Knox school. Yes. Sir. What was the bare the bare land value, Neil, of the the uh, G. F. Johnson property? Chris, I really uh, I didn't know we were going to discuss that today, so I haven't looked at it in a while. I'm thinking it was in the neighborhood of one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Does that sound right, John Doug? Uh, I think it was about a hundred and sixty. Okay. Uh, that was the uh, property only. Correct. And it didn't include the uh, buildings, Judge. The improvements, that is. Was that just the property that the that the the senior center and and the the swimming pool sat on? Just that part, or was so that the, the whole? So this this didn't include the swimming pool. That was two separate issues: the uh, swimming pool up the old Virginia High School, uh, uh, Master Harris. This included all the uh, the park, the walk, uh, and all that. Uh, Correct. Uh, as well as the property where the, the community. Most of the park at Long Fork, the, the property is already in the county's name. The swimming this, pool this primarily yeah. was other pro other properties, and especially where the community center sits. Yeah. The Virgie Pool property w was a separate matter, and it was about 30, 39, uh, Jeannie Robinson tells me, so I'll take her word for it. Not they did matter. about $150,000 for that building, all the stuff on that, on that down at the water for it, hotel stuff. Down. The improvements on it, as Mayor Johnson said, was around $150,000. I would say at least that much. I mean, the senior citizens building is a very nice building. It was, uh, the interesting thing about it, uh, my friend, is that it was bought once with taxpayers' money. Now, uh, now the school board's position is we, the taxpayers have to buy it again, so I. Well, I, I would very respectfully disagree with that. Uh, let, let me say, the, uh, John Doug, if you looked at that property with all of the improvements, it would be worth much more than $160,000. Dixon Nunnery, whom you know and whom we all respect in the legal community, uh, he appraised the property uh, without any consideration for those improvements, any of them, 
and, and that's his $160,000 figure. I don't disagree at all with Mr. Johnson that the improvements on the property are probably worth an additional 150. But we're not asking anybody to pay the Board of Education for the improvements that the fiscal court placed on the property, just the property itself. Counselor, the, uh, that, that building is a beautiful, we, we got a lot of beautiful uh, community centers. That is one of the most beautiful ones of all of them. I agree. But it's a, it's a building that the Board of Education could jointly use also for, for different things that you all have uh, in, in that area of the county. That's the reason we need to have a meeting. We need to sit down and- I would agree. And uh, I think In the meantime, we'd like to get our majestic property back. Give me we, permission <laughs> from the physical court to sign this deed. And uh, if there are, no, are there any further questions by any magistrates? Uh, the other thing, Aaron, we was, I was working with Fields. He was gonna get us a deed for that thing and he died on us. And, and, uh, well, uh, uh, Chick, I, 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 and I knew Lloyd well, and he was a wonderful fellow and did a fabulous job for the Board of Education, but, and, and he probably would have tried to get you a D, but it would have been under the same circumstances that we're discussing now, because uh, the, the Kentucky Department of Education, and they are, they are more of an oversight uh, entity today than they've ever been before, and, and they, I can assure you they would not let us simply convey that property to the fiscal court. They, they will simply won't, it's, a, it's against the law. Counselor, we, uh, we uh, had a groundbreaking up there, right in 2000 and, would it been Jeannie, in 2007, right, right after we went in office, after the administration went in office. Mm -hmm. At that groundbreaking, and we have pictures, mm -hmm. for the county attorney and myself, the school superintendent and the school board member. Mm -hmm. Was I, that the groundbreaking? I don't, I don't doubt it a bit. And there was no misunderstanding at that time Apparently about there was. using that property <laughs> for a community if, building. If, if anybody thought at that time that the fiscal court owned that property, then there was a misunderstanding. All due respect, Judge. Nobody, it, nobody said the fiscal court owned it. Uh, I, I know, and that's... There was no, nothing stated by the school board member and or the superintendent at that time. I... I you know, I, I and they had a shovel just like sure. I had a shovel and Magistrate Johnson had a shovel. I don't know how it happened. I don't know exactly when it happened, but there was never a lease, there was never a deed. I, just a simple oversight on everybody's part, I presume. I don't know. I didn't even know about it myself. I don't know if I represented the board. When, when was that? About 2007, Judge, if I may. It's really not been very fair, Neil. He didn't come here today prepared to discuss this, and uh, but it's 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 an issue of great importance, as you can tell, to Master I, Johnson, uh, yes. the judge, and this entire court. And that is a fantastic, you know that it uh, is community uh, facility. It's it's so well used, you can't hardly get a, a an appointment to use it, can you, Chick? And uh, and. Uh, uh, whatever happened, it, it is difficult to determine, but I, I think we need to pursue this. Uh, you know, uh, the, the judge made a good point, and, and uh, adult education type classes, quilting, sewing, you know, home ec type things could be uh, worked out there, and maybe just something to think about, a dollar a year long-term lease or something. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 know your, I know your problems about conveying with the Board of Education. We have the same problem here with the law. Everybody thinks that we can, for example, trade properties. Right. Uh, frankly, if we owned the majestic property under the law of this Commonwealth, uh, Neil, and you know this, we couldn't just up and trade it. Even if it, even if our property was if, worth more than the long for. If you owned it. If we owned it. Correct. Which we don't, <laughs> no, obviously. That's right. <laughs> but I, but I, I, I would hope, uh, and I know you will, and I know you're willing to do this. And I, I, you know, the superintendent and the board has been good to work with county government over the sure. uh, years that I've been associated with this business. And, and, and I vice hope versa. we can get, get we, together we down pretty quickly. Two buildings because and, of the lack of funding in the last sure. three years. Uh, as Master Johnson knows, down to Robinson Creek and uh, up to Virgie, we tore the building down back behind the swim sure. pool. Oh, I, 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 with I our, totally agree. With our county equipment. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we have been over backwards to work with the school board 
and uh, we just want consideration. That's well, all. You have indeed, and we appreciate that. I, I would point out uh, on the it's lease the issue bill. that John Doug mentioned, we also have restrictions on, on lease arrangements. We cannot lease property for more than one year at a time. We have several volunteer fire departments to whom we lease property for one year at a time and on which they have fire department uh, buildings, uh, firehouses. But, uh, and and that's, been a, that's been a good relationship with some uh, fire departments throughout the county. Uh, and I would agree too that this is a fabulous piece of property with some really nice improvements uh, placed on there by the fiscal court. And if there is any way to resolve this matter and to preserve what's up there, I, I, I agree it needs to be done. Good shape. So any other questions by the county attorney or any magistrate? If, if not, uh, we'll ask for a motion to authorize the county judge executive to sign the deed. Motion. Got a motion, Master Johnson, to have a second. Have a second. Have a roll call vote, please. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Murphy. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Mr. Harris. Yes. Judge Ruth. Yes. Uh, would you work with Jeannie to get an appointment for? I certainly will. For yourself and the I, I, I certainly yeah. will. She'll call me. Uh, Magistrate Johnson. We'll work through that through the central office up there. Judge and gentlemen of the court, thank you very much. John Duck, thank and you. And always thank you Jimmy. for your kindness and cooperation that we always can get uh, through, the, through the auspice of your office and especially as, as you represent the Pike County Board of Education. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll make a motion pursuant to KRS 61810 that we move into executive session to discuss uh, acquisition of real estate or personnel matters. I have a motion second. Madam Clerk, have a roll call vote, please. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Murphy. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Mr. Harris. Yes. Judge, Judge Ruth. to execute a lease when presented to him in proper form as discussed in executive session and mirroring the EQT lease uh, uh, in its essential terms. And when that lease is satisfactory to the county attorney, authorizing you to execute the lease on behalf of Pike County. Uh, the court has been made aware of what the uh, property consists of, it's two tracks, and therefore there will be uh, two tracks in one lease or two separate leases. We, 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 that's a, just a matter of uh, uh, drafting, uh, and they'll have all the protection. I might add, too, that the IDEA Board judge uh, has approved this unanimously in a meeting just a few days ago and uh, Governor Patton added one provision to the approval as long as it doesn't cost Pike County any money. And that certainly is a concern of this court. I think Magistrate Murphy expressed it. And all the magistrates are, are aware that we don't need to be spending any money in a situation like this, uh, at least not now, and hopefully not in the future. But Judge, this, is, this will be done at no cost to Pike County, but at great uh, potential benefit. I'll make the motion to have a second. Second. Have a second, Mayor Murphy. Have a roll call vote, please. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Murphy. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Mr. Harris. Yes. Judge Ruth. Yes. Next thing we want to take up, and you know, Magistrate Harris and myself, we won't be here for this next court. The rest of the members of this court, plus Mr. Varney from uh, the Belfry area, uh, then that will be the court. You may wonder why we're having a discussion today in the purchase of new equipment for the Solid Waste Department. Simply because this this is, and I'm, I made a note, I asked, the, the question has been asked a few times the last few days, and I heard the answer to it today. This is our only, it's the last opportunity to get financing done at a reasonable rate. 
Now that is the uh, opinion of uh, Keiko. I might, might add that uh, we have a Keiko representative with us, the finance officer of Keiko. Uh, This is Midler, Midler, and uh, we also have with us today the uh, company to, that provided the, the equipment, and he's available if any questions need to be asked by the court or myself or the county attorney. So we, we're going to get a presentation today, and you're going to see what the situation is facing uh, this county. We have uh, Jeff Justice available with us today. Uh, we have uh, we have uh, Bobby Mullins. They will be involved in a presentation. Then you've got to have uh, the figures put together so it will be understood. And we have Charles Carlton, who has worked with the budget office who has worked with uh, the uh, with Keiko, and who uh, who has even and I finally got to understand that it ended up as three point four percent. But then, when you look at it over a period in a sliding scale as it's paid down, it comes out at one point seven six percent. So. Uh, we just felt that it, we're to a point that we can't offer services anymore because of the mileage on the equipment that we have operating. Now, I'm going to give you some more news. Pike County has approximately $13 million. You can correct me if you need to on that. Approximately $13 million. 13, 665, 581 of outstanding debt. Our debt capacity available is right today is 60 million, 471, 472. So folks, this physical court, the past physical court, this physical court has been frugal in head on the county's business. Uh, I have been told by those who know that counties this size, bonding is way, way beyond that already. So we, we are in good shape financially. When we end this budget year, and there are those in the local press that continues to say that this county is leaving the next judge executive uh, in a hole and to dig yourself out. That is not so. Treasure's not here right now, but when she gets back, you know, you, we can ask her that question directly. Uh, you all know, and they should know, they sit here at these meetings, that we have 2.6 million from the settlement with Purdue that Purdue Pfizer in the Oxycontin case set aside. We have been told that around 400,000 that we had, uh, that due to the fact that we, as an administration in this physical court, and we even put that the county judge executive had to give approval to uh, over $5,000 to be spent from the county budget. And we do know that, uh, that we are within the budget that this new administration coming in will not have to cut nobody off. And this court knows that. This court knows that uh, John DeBilter, with her years of experience, uh, and also with Rhonda James, the CPA and finance director, and the present administration and this physical court has seen that we, we, have, we have financially operated the county properly and they won't have to, in regards to what you've read in this local media, uh, saying that they have to dig themselves out, they're leaving in such a hole, that's hogwash. 
that's, that, that's not the truth, that's not the fact. So we're gonna get back to this presentation. As this presentation goes through, Dan's gonna put up the condition of the equipment that we have. Uh, I, I looked for Haywire the other day, holding it together, and I found that we had new technology. And that'll be points out to you too. We have, frankly, we have the plastic pulls now that you tie things with. But they're not using the haywire to keep our equipment together. So, uh, so I'll let you go on with the presentation, and then we'll get to the the financial end of it with the Keiko representative and Mr. Carlton. And wonder what caused that, Dan? Do we know? Well, he's going to have to have that close to him because we're going to have to be able to Maybe hear. Uh, both from uh, all four of these people. So uh, I hope they checked them, Jeannie. You had these checked before court meeting started today. So as we always usually do, and so that we'll know that we can be able to hear what's presented. So I'll turn it over to Mr. Mullins and Mr. Justice to go through the state of equipment today and the mileage on the equipment. Okay, Judge, first of all, uh, you know, ever since I took over with, uh, as Can you pull the microphone around and, and turn it up a little bit? Ever since that I took over as a solid waste commissioner. Raise uh, it up just a little bit. We've been talking about uh, wanting to uh, purchase new equipment. Of course, you know, we know uh, financial situation, you know, and trying to keep this county operating. But we've just about reached a point now, or we have reached a point now, that uh, we've got to have some equipment. I mean, there's uh, days that we're uh, on a lot that we're supposed to have, say, five packers are running. We'll do good to have two sometimes. They may be three down in a day. And uh, we're wearing our newest trucks out trying to uh, keep up with the old ones and the it is getting harder each day to get through that day and, and to be a service to the people. In order for us to see some relief, we're going to have to have five packers and six mini packers and a boom truck. And our boom truck is uh, its just about beyond repair. Uh, I needed to use it today. You get the boom up and it won't even move. So. Uh, Everything on it's wore out and gone, and you can see, and that's that truck right there that you see on the screen. It's got 307,316 mile on it. It's a 1996. And I'd like to, in case uh, any of the magistrates has any question on uh, the care being taken of the trucks, um, there's things that we need to consider in when we're talking about garbage trucks. Um, a garbage truck, when it starts out of the morning, it's not like you would use a truck in the road department or whatever. Uh, however many customers they have that day and possibly 150 because we serve 22,000 customers plus in this county. When they get in the truck and they start out, uh, they stop, they pull up, they stop pull up, stop, they get in, get out, get in and out. So you may put a truck in gear 150 times in one day, you open that door 150 times, you shut it 150 times, and uh, you let out on that clutch 150 times. And so the wire and tire that goes with these trucks, uh, not only that, I mean, you have to run the packer to pack that garbage, the hydraulics is continually working and Occasionally, we do have somebody that maybe don't take the best care of a truck, but we try to uh, find out who that person is and, and uh, try to correct them whenever that we can. But these trucks, there's just so much a maintenance garage can do for them, and, and Jeff has done a wonderful job in keeping them going and keeping us on the road. And um, but when everything's rusted out, there's nothing there to work with. They're rusted out, they're gone. And whenever that, uh, you see all of this rust that's on the trucks, um, 
and you're dumping mini packers into them and you're compacting that garbage and all of the uh, garbage juice and things runs out on the ground and you have people across this county calling and saying well, we don't want it squashed in front of our house and and I understand that but we've got to run the blades we've got to pack compact garbage and and as long as you got these holes and things that can't even be patched and uh, then you're going to have that that waste of coming out of those trucks and so we're just at the point to where that we've got to do something other and uh, and I can't express enough uh, the condition of these trucks and um, so as you said earlier today we've got uh, we do have a proposal to make um, and we do have someone from Keiko we have Charles here and also Jeff uh, the upkeep on the trucks the cost and Charles will go into these numbers for us here in a minute telling us what it's been and uh, it's just it's just ridiculous at how much we're having to spend on them right now just to be able to pick up the garbage from day to day so uh, if uh, Jeff has something he wants to add to that why well, then Jeff uh, uh, you might pull your microphone up closer to you but uh we, have, we continuously uh, thank you and your men all the time for keeping us on the road. Well, I've got a good crew, I have to say that, because they work hard. And those pictures are not just the worst trucks, that's the last two times that way. Jeff, at Bobby Branham, as I was over to your shop, most of the, most of the vehicles in those bays was garbage trucks, 90% of them. And then garbage the trucks. trucks. Like when it snows, I have to push them back and move the salt trucks in, so. I understand. So Charles, do you want to give us some figures? Yeah. Yes, I will, Judge. Daniel, could you bring up the maintenance cost sheet, please? What we have here is, this is broken out for each of the uh, yards with the vehicles that are proposed to, for the 11 trucks to be replaced. This excludes the uh, cost for the boom truck, which is out over 300,000 miles. But for the total for these 11 vehicles, it's over 2 million miles on them. The Packers are 1999s uh, and 2003 miles. The newest vehicle you have are Mini Packers at 2006, and they're eight years old. If you look, all these are up all well over 100,000. They're up in the 200,000 range. And what Jeff did was provide me with a detailed breakout of each and every uh, ticket for parts for, by each vehicle for the last two years. And so it's possible to go through and look at your parts costs for two years. And in general, my experience in the trucking business has been that your labor cost is about equal to your parts cost. So I carried it at the same cost. And so this fleet right here is we've spent and incurred costs of about $260,000 for the last two years. So we're spending about $11,744 on parts and labor per truck per year. If we go through and replace these vehicles, uh, we're going to have uh, payments in the vicinity of about $240,000 per year and be operating with 50% of our fleet with brand new equipment. Uh, Ms. Midler will, will go over how this will come together, uh, but one thing I do want to say that in working out the pricing on this, this is all based upon a seven-year note with a 3.4% uh, interest rate, and one of the uh, important things that, that I want to go into is the cost analysis on the last sheet. We did for each, for each piece of equipment, we did the payment, but I'm going to go to, in particular, to cover with you all the last sheet. We're, uh, what you're doing is that you have a monthly payment cost of, of about $21,849 a month. For that, you have 11 new vehicles. We have 22,903 customers that we provide uh, daily, uh, provide 
garbage service to in Pike County. The cost for a new pack or truck per customer per month is 12 cents. For a mini packer truck to replace it per customer per month on a seven year basis is a nickel. And for the boom truck, it's seven cents. The total equipment package for five uh, packers, for six uh, mini packers, and for the boom truck would run 95 cents per month per customer. That's another way of looking at the cost. But one thing I want to emphasize in this presentation is that we're looking at interest rates that are comparable to those obtained by the federal government. This, these are at historic lows, and even while we have been working on this, the interest rates have increased. So there, um, but one thing that's, while you're paying out $21,800 a month, you're only paying $26.93 of that as being interest. All the rest is going toward retirement of principal. So we're almost paying, we're getting these trucks at zero down with uh, no payment until they arrive. And then uh, uh, they were financed for 84 months at an extremely low interest rate. And I will turn it over to Mrs. Mittler, unless there are some questions. One thing, Charles, before Kelly gets started, that would be an additional 95 cent on top of the rate that's already charged, correct? It's not an additional charge, it's just an additional, it is a cost. But one thing that I want to say is that this is an offset because we, have, we don't have the cost of maintaining equipment that uh, we're having to pour parts into, and we have an unknown amount of future parts or engine replacements or transmission replacements and so on, and it becomes uneconomical at a point to take a, a 1999 Packer and keep putting parts into it. Uh, when you can, for the same amount of money, be operating new equipment and also that will have a factory warranty on it covering uh, the first X number of miles and months of operation. Ms. Carlton, I think what the treasurer was saying, this is not a raise. No, it's not a raise in, in, at all. What it is, that we're just simply getting new equipment, getting rid of costly old equipment. You were just using that in the cost. Uh, That's, That's correct. That's correct. Charles. Correct, Madam Treasurer. I thought Charles. the same thing when you uh, said can that. I, can I ask a question, Judge? I'm sorry, Leo. Go ahead. Very briefly, and I just want to make sure that I understand this. And I'm, I hear what you're saying about the maintenance uh, cost, the parts, and the labor. But given the system that we have here and the, and the labor force that we have, without cutting the labor force, wouldn't those labor costs remain consistent? Yes and no, because okay. first off, we're having to do overtime to maintain the trucks. And we're having to send people out to maintain trucks and we're having trucks down and we're having to pay towing charges and all sorts of things. And those things stop with new equipment. And if they, and but, only for half, bills. but only for half the fleet. You still got half the fleet. You have half the fleet. And, and basically what I would recommend is that over time, you need to replace out all of this fleet. I, I don't know, uh, uh, eternal life it does not exist for machinery. This is the highest mileage trucks that you, you are replacing this time. That is correct. These are the oldest and the worst. Correct. Charles, may I ask a question? Yes, sir. If I may. Uh, did, did we have some, some requests for equipment on the severance tax? Do you know? Not. Did we request any? Not that I'm aware of. No. Uh, we're, we're on Pike TV, so if you're talking, you uh, not to, to my knowledge. Right, okay, I mean I know we we got the issue with the severance tax, but I was just trying to uh, just think out loud, if you will. I, I sure. didn't know if there was any uh, any request or or, or or if there may be some potential. 
the problem down, down the road to get to get some severance tax. The only, the only, the only, the only I'm sorry. The only, the only uh, reservation, for lack of a better word, I'm, I have just seen these numbers, and they, I'm not saying they're not accurate. I'm just not familiar with with what type of study you did. Uh, but I, 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 at the same time, I was thinking my, there might be uh, some potential because I haven't talked to John to, about the numbers uh, and whether or not we can even afford this. Uh, but there might be some potential down the road to. to possibly well, get some severance tax dollars. I think, I think that if the severance tax law was changed from its current configuration, that might be possible. But then that, then again, on the other side, there, if that doesn't happen, then these, you still need this equipment. And then you have the other half that while it is uh, not quite as bad, it's, it's in a close second position. Right, I understand that. Uh, any other, anybody else got any comments? Tell me, uh, the logical thing on the figuring is what you're spending out for labor, parts, and things per month per vehicle. Then compare that to the price of what a new one's going to be, and uh, I'd say it'd be pretty close on those vehicles, wouldn't it? Yes, it is. That's what you got to look at is uh, you're going to continue playing out all this money for repairs and labor and everything like that. And if it's equal to a payment on a new one, you got to look at it like that. I think they should start writing these drivers up if they don't take care of them trucks. Well, I agree with you, Kenneth. I I'm had one last month run one drive oil. Instead of parking it, he drove it back to the lot and it drive oil. And that's going to cost about $14,000 for the motor in that jet. And the truck ain't worth putting the motor in. They beat and banged it. It's tore all the pieces. And I think they should start writing them up if they don't take care of them trucks. Well, we're, we're, we're to the point now to where, you know, money's, uh, I mean, the, the, the well's almost run dry. Uh, and it doesn't look like it's going to get any better in the near future. And, and I just, you know, I don't, uh, I don't know if you were expecting a vote on this today or not, but I, you know, I like to, don't want to rush into any, uh, decision until I have time uh, to digest it. I did that years ago, and it turned out to be a, a, a terrible mistake. And it wasn't even a matter related to the physical court. But you know, I like to at least uh, look at it and uh, chew chew on it a little bit and digest it and, and see how it tastes. Something else you better consider uh, is your road department equipment is getting. At that point, too, especially yeah. the back hole. It's in bad shape. I got a back hole down now and a gun truck, too. I don't know what was it. Uh, Kelly Mittler. It's not far behind us. Keiko financial officer. Uh, would you give us your little presentation, please? Certainly. Uh, Judge Rutherford called our office and asked me to look at possible financing for this project, which is approximately $1.8 million. It, they were looking for a fixed rate for seven years, so I called two banks and got quotes for what they could do for us. The first one um, is a 3.4% interest rate. They said that they would like to reserve the right to move if the rates go up drastically, that they may have to raise it as high as 25 basis points. Um, we don't think that'll happen between now and July, but it is a possibility, so they asked me to pass that along. The structure would be annually, annually renewable, and there would be no penalties in connection with this. So if you guys had extra money at some point and didn't want to pay it down or off, you would be free to do that. I have a second quote from a bank, and the rate would be between 3.2% and 345 it's also an annually re renewable structure, and this rate does come with some penalties. Um, the first year would be 3%, the second year would be 2%, and then the third year and thereafter would be nothing. So it would be your choice. But that penalty well, Let me say that uh, what, the penalty what is for early payment only. Am I correct in what I stated that uh, two months ago it was 3.1? And uh, since we since two months, it's gone up 3.4. Would you agree with the statement that I further made? This is the last opportunity that uh, this court or any court would have in regard to this type of interest. 
our theory is that rates are at the lowest that they've ever been, and there is no place for them to go but up. So we do believe at some so point they the will go up. the longer you put it off, the higher the interest goes. And what that's happened to us in 60 days, it's gone up that much. That is correct. We did have an offer for 2.51% two months ago, and when I went back to them about this on Did you say 2.5 two, two months ago? Well, you can tell how much it's raised. And but Kelly, way. in saying that, that is what they think it'll be until it actually closes, which if that's right now, it would be this rate that you're quoting now. The rate that it would be would be 3.4, exactly, but they have a 25 basis points, so the highest it would be would be 365. Hey Kelly, if you give us a rate, how is it locked in for so many days? Um, the rate is not locked in until you submit the application. Okay. So until you start the project and they know that they have something, then I, I cannot lock it in. But another way of saying it is that when you move from a 2.5 to a 3.4, you've increased almost 40% in interest costs. And that's how much it's moved in two months. 40%. Any other questions? As I said, the mayor should hire them myself. We won't be here. But... I'll give you my opinion. Solid waste program is going to be shut down. Judge, I make a motion for us to go ahead and buy the trucks. And then let's study on some, get us, get us some equipment too to work in, in the road system. So they're, they're about gone too. Okay. Motion to go ahead and buy the trucks. Do we have a second? I'll buy equipment for the road department. Yeah, I'll make it. I'll say Have a second. Have a roll call vote, please. What's the motion for? Motion, yeah. motion to go yeah, ahead and to proceed <laughs> with KCO uh, to purchase the new equipment. <laughs> Simply because of the rate that it's gone up from 2.5 to 3.4 in 60 days, and the fact that I've been told that it's a last opportunity. If we don't take advantage of it, we it won't, the figures won't. It's that quick. Well, Judge, I'd like what I, I mean. If it's okay with the other managers, I, I would. I don't have a problem uh, buying the trucks, but I, I would like to maybe, yeah. I, I, if we could t table this until the next meeting to at least have an opportunity to digest some of the numbers. In two weeks, what do you anticipate, <laughs> that, Madam Treasurer? Would would we be at? Any jeopardy of going up in two weeks? Another. I mean, you never know at this point in time. I just, I just think we're going. To, you all, it's your all's problem, not mine. And Chris Harrison's problem. Judge, one thing that I think uh, we need to mention too with uh, we have uh, Larry Riddle with us from Municipal Equipment and. Uh, if you was to even order the equipment today, some of it you're looking to be in six months out before. Would you come around to the podium? Because there might be a question that, that Bobby may want to ask you that question and, and let you tell us that. On the uh, chassis of the trucks, the, the, like the Max for the 32 yard rear loaders and the Ford chassis for the six yard side loaders, they, the truck dealers cannot give me an exact delivery date until we process the order and get the serial numbers assigned. Uh, in our conversation recently on the MAX, just the chassis were approximately four months out. It takes us as a body company uh, 30 to 60 days after we get the chassis at the plant to do the body. So you could be looking at four to six months on getting uh, the trucks. Uh, with the exception of the uh, boom truck, which we have it in stock, you can take immediate delivery of it. Uh, we just got it in last week when we proposed. Uh, but uh, and these are prices on this quote are state contract prices. They've already been bid, um, and uh, it just eliminates a lot of time. And but the quicker we can get them in, the quicker we can get them. And and rates are going up, and the prices are going to go up too. Our contracts. Uh, on the uh, bodies are good till August the 1st, but this price is locked in if y'all decide to do this, is this quote that we gave you. Jeff, let me ask you, do we have a, I mean, can we make it a week? I mean, we've, we, I know we've made it a few years, and we've, I mean. I, I, I'm sure we could make it a week. I mean, if they have to double up, they have to double up. 
the only thing I would like to see, if we do get equipment, is some way to enforce them making it being taken care of. I mean, somebody needs to be accountable. Yeah, well, I'm like, it's like what Kenneth said. You know, we've got got that problem probably all over the county, but it, it just doesn't uh, doesn't always get addressed, and it doesn't do you all any any justice either. No, when I question them, they say, "Well, it was like that when I was before I started driving." And they it, never it, they it, never did. They never tore anything up, did they? No, it's never a direct answer. Due to what we what we've been informed today. We have a motion and second, and then I have to clerk for roll call vote. Oh, Judge, I don't know if uh, there are two motions on the floor. There's a motion to purchase the equipment by Master John. No, I'm going to. I believe that I didn't hear a second. Yeah, I was going to make a motion to table it until maybe a special meeting or we could have some further discussion of the, of the numbers. Yeah, if that gets a second. Then I think it takes precedent. You have to vote on this. Are there a second to. Before you vote on Master Anderson just made a motion. So are there a second to his motion? Yeah, I'll, I'll second his motion, and here's, here's why I'll, I will. Um, this, is a, this is a, a big decision, and, and it's, uh, yeah, although I'm not going to vote on the ultimate uh, the resolution because I'm not going to be here to have to pay for it, uh, and I don't think that's fair of me to participate in voting on it, but it is a big decision for everybody, on the, the people that are remaining on the court, because you're all going to have to find out a way to pay for this. Uh, coming down uh, over the next four years. Uh, the service, there's no question the service is needed. There's no question that our um, equipment is in terrible shape um, and um, that keeping our solid wa rates, solid waste rates low is really starting to show and it's showing in the, in the, the condition of our equipment. And that's, that's probably the most unfortunate thing. And, and, and one thing that it's even more unfortunate is the safety issues that this, the, this equipment is now presenting. So while it is a, it's a very, very important issue that needs to be addressed soon, this court you know, really needs to think about the, the path that it's going to take to pay for this stuff because it's, it's going, something that you guys are going to have to live with you know, for, you know, for the next four years. So I, I'll second Jeff's motion to, to a, table just to give everybody opportunity to, I know Magistrate Dotson would probably want to participate in that conversation as, as well. And, and uh, so just Judge, out of respect for him, I'll, I'll second it, the motion. I might add for the information of the court that the uh, motion to table is an undebatable motion. So you, you are correct in calling for a roll call vote. And Judge, I'd like to also to I don't know if I, if I would need to amend my motion, but I I, I didn't. I, I was thinking I just didn't say it like Manstrad Harris did. That Manstrad Dotson may want to be part of this discussion as well. Okay, we have a roll call vote, please. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Johnson. I'm going to stick to no because we need this because it's, the inners might go up and the old trucks. I see them beside the road up in Chevy every day. So I'm just we we're just hurt them. And we're just going to be out of business. I think we should go ahead and do it now and get it over with while we got the money. Mr. Murphy? No. Mr. Robinson? No. Mr. Dodson? I'm sorry, he's not here. Mr. Harris? Yes. And Judge Rutherford? No. He didn't vote for it. He did vote? No. Okay. Kelly Mittler, I want to thank you and uh, we'll thank you for coming up today to answer a question. Charles, I want, I want to thank you for all the work you've done with, uh, with our budget office and with, uh, with Keiko and others. Uh, in the last 60 days. And it's unbelievable that the interest rate would go up that amount in a short period of time. And, uh, uh, also, Jeff, again, thank you. I don't know how in the world you all have done it. But I think you're, as I said, I won't be here, but I think you're gonna be out of business. I don't see how in the world that you can continue to buy these parts and, and keep this equipment on the road. You, you've got it right in front of us. You need to take a vote on Chip. Master Nick. Uh, I can't hear you. You need to take a vote on Chip. We will now go to the second uh, uh, motion by Magistrate Johnson and a second. And uh, Madam Clerk will have a roll call vote on the, on the original motion. 
Mr. Anderson. John, now we are, are you comfortable that we got the, the finances to pay for the purchase? If we take these off of the road and those others escalate, you know, no, at this point in time, solid waste is not running in the red. Solid waste is running in, I mean, not running in the black, it's running in the red, and we're having to transfer so much money. Um, I'm doing temporary cash transfers to it right now till we get our annual yearly billing out because we're not making enough to pay the bills monthly. Okay. I just worry that, yes, in theory, these are what the costs are, but when those others are still out on the road, are they going to double and eats up any sort of revenue that's left over to pay this cost? Okay. I vote no. Mr. Johnson. I'll vote. Yes. Mr. Murphy. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Mr. Harris. Abstain. And Judge Rosenberg. I mean, what, what else? We don't have much left on the agendas. If you pull it up, Dan, on the, what we have. Still got personnel, I guess. If that, that's not what I was looking for. Okay. Do you have the, Jim, you got it there? Yes, sir. Acknowledge the receipt of the Pike County Clerk's audit for the year ending December 31, 2013. Motion. We all have a copy. Have a motion from Magistrate Harris to have a second. Second. Have a second. Second. Uh, Magistrate, uh, Magistrate Anderson, have a roll call vote, please. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Murphy. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Mr. Harris. Yes. Judge Ruth. Yes. We have personnel. Uh, Judge Pruitt. We don't have much, Judge, but we have a. Uh, we more on CDL driver on road lot number one, Johns Creek, 3H rate of pay. Uh, Jared Smith is applied and Troy Bryan is applied. We're asking uh, Commissioner Hatcher to test them and advise us in the next court meeting. Ask approval to hire Kevin Chain as a temporary loader for solid waste area number two at Belcher at 2H rate of pay effective November 3rd. Approval to hire Anthony J. Roberts as a temporary loader for solid waste area number three at Robinson Creek, 2H rate of pay effective November 14th. That's all we have. That's the report of personnel. It's my recommendation and my motion to have a second. Have a second, Mr. Robinson. Madam Clerk, have a roll call vote, please. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Murphy. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Mr. Harris. Yes. Judge Reed. Yes. <coughs> Does any, any commissioner, director have any questions for the court as a body? Does any master have anything else to say? If not, if everybody's getting hungry, need a motion. Uh, Treasure. Dunny Treasure's business. business, Judge. Oh, I'm sorry, we can't leave. We can't leave <laughs> Can the treasure out. We can't get the bills. Paid. Judge, before she gets into that, I want to turn into the clerk here a little road extension she can give to Frank and. Madam Clerk, Kent. would you make it a part of the record of today's meeting? Okay, but w can we do road work before we do that? Yeah, we want. Uh, let's. Go ahead, Magistrate. Motion. Anderson. Got a motion in regard to road, road work. work. I have a second, Magistrate Murphy. I have a roll call vote, please. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Murphy. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Mr. Harris. Yes. Judge Ruth. Yes. Thank well, Madam Treasurer, I think when you carried that food in here and I could smell it, so <laughs> that I was ready to adjourn the meeting then, <laughs> but I just about got it adjourned before you did your business. Get us what's up over here. Go right ahead. I need to get Frankie to check on me a new salt truck, you know, the 3,500 Chevrolet truck. Did he Everybody make a motion to make a note of that and and uh, tell Frank to to call Kenneth and to work with him in regard to getting a, a truck? <laughs> that truck, if they blowed the motor up in, it ain't worth putting $14,000 motor in a twenty or $2,000 truck. Good shape. So we can... See what we can do through surplus and so forth. Madam Treasurer. Authorize any necessary transfers and interfund transfers to pay the bills, payroll, health, and life insurance. Have, motion. have a motion, Magistrate Robinson, second Magistrate Johnson. Yes. Have a roll call vote, Madam Clerk. Magistrate Anderson. Yes. Magistrate Johnson. Yes. Magistrate Murphy. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Mr. Harris. Yes. Judge Ruth. 
authorize the payment of the expenditure approval list dated November 17, 2014, and any other utility and telephone bills received before the checks are run. I have a motion. Motion. I've got a motion, Master Murphy, to have a second. Master Robinson, Madam Clerk, have a roll call vote, please. Master Anderson. Yes. Master Johnson. Yes. Master Murphy. Yes. Master Robinson. Yes. Master Harris. Abstain. Judge Rutherford. Yes. Amend the court order number 10.21.14.008 for the payment to York Smith Construction to increase payment by $6,600 from $32,828 to $39,428. that pass through money? Yes, it'll be passed through Pass through money. money. Have a motion? Second. Motion, Mr. Murphy. Have a second. Mr. Johnson, have a roll call vote, please. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Master Murphy. Yes. Master Robinson. Yes. Master Harris. Yes. Judge Rutherford. Authorize the registration, if any, and lodging for Bobby Mullins to attend the SWAC December meeting at the Hyatt Place, Lexington, Kentucky, December 4th through the 5th, 2014. I have a motion. Motion, Master Robinson. I have a second. I have a second. Master Murphy. Have a roll call vote, please. Mr. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Master Johnson. Yes. Master Murphy. Yes. Master Robinson. Yes. Master Dodson. I'm sorry, Mr. Harris. Yes. Judge Rutherford. Yeah. Authorize the registration fee of $175 and lodging for the current elected officials to attend the newly elected officials training at the Gold House Hotel, Louisville, Kentucky, December 10th through the 12th, 2014. Anybody who is going to take office the first Monday in the January has to pay for it by for themselves at this point because they're not official elected officials and will be reimbursed by the court after first the year. they're yeah. sworn into their office. I have a motion. motion. Motion, Magistrate Murphy. I have a second. I have a second, Magistrate Robinson. Madam Clerk, have a roll call vote, please. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Murphy. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Mr. Harris. Yes. Judge Rutherford. Authorize the registrations and lodging for those who wish to attend the 37th Annual Kentucky Transportation Conference at the Marriott Griffin Gate Resort, Lexington, Kentucky, January 21st through the 23rd, 2015. I have a motion. Motion, Master Robinson, I have a second. I have a second. Madam Clerk, have a roll call vote, please. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Murphy. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Mr. Harris. Yes. Judge Ruth. Yes. We have a final invoice from Perfection Group saying the total owed to them is $50,666.44. Even though we reference these two invoices, they have deducted some amounts from the invoices, and there is $52,944.44 left in the account as of September 30th because it's a semi-annual report I get. Jeannie, do we have in the fall from Terry Rogers a letter stating that, the, that he recommends this be paid? Terry said that shortly. I can't hear you, but I'm sure Pac TV can. He does recommend it. He says he's okay with it. He had a meeting with you. You all talked yeah. about it. Yes, yeah, he was going to do a, a letter. I can get him to, but... Oh, uh, 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 Terry Rogers recommends that they be paid. He said they've been very cooperative. Anything that he's called them on, they've been here to do it. I'd also like for you all to reference, though, a copy. There ended up being a credit for some work they did not do at the Hall of Justice that they have charged us for some stuff they have done over the time frame, too. So just want to make you all aware that there was a credit and for service calls that they say were not included in their price, um, they have spent down on that credit. And the judge will need to sign a disbursement at request number three. I'll need to get that from Michael George and have the judge to sign that in order to submit this for payment. Jenny, you understand what the treasurer was saying? So we need to take that into consideration. Do we have a motion? We have a motion to have a second. That would pay for a second. Master Johnson, Madam Clerk, I have a roll call vote, please. Master Anderson. 
Yes. Master Johnson? Yes. Master Murphy? Yes. Master Robinson? Yes. Master Harris? Yes. Judge Rufi? Yes. Kelly, I'd like to ask one thing before you, Kelly, if you wouldn't care, just before you leave, this will probably be about 60 days, won't it, to get this in place for the funding. So if there's any trucks that come in ahead of time, it's going to at least be 60 days plus possibly so. We'll not have any money until this all gets approved and finalized. Correct. Any other? Yeah. Being said, we do have a small internal pool that I could possibly, if you need it, I, I understand there is a truck that's available now. I don't we know. could go ahead and close on that one and then refinance this truck into your bigger lease. Okay. If you need me to do that, I can. I can. It's just whatever you all need. Um, nobody made me aware of this, so is there one that we're needing to purchase at this point? Boom truck. So I guess we'll have to do that to start with. I'll get the process started when I get back to the office and I'll get in touch with you. Okay, thanks Kelly. Thanks John. Well, let me say before we before I ask for a motion to adjourn that we got a this is this is thank this is Thanksgiving and we have a lot to be thankful for in Pike County and, and in our lives. Uh, so the Lord has been good to us. We've been blessed. So uh, a judge, we, uh, judge, Thanksgiving, Thursday and Friday, both off? Jeannie? It's cold. Cold, okay. yes, sir. Okay, is that way it in is? In the cold. cold. In the cold. Okay. okay. So I just wanted to make, make that remark that we have a lot to, to, to be thankful for. Uh, anything else? Have anybody got anything to say? If not, the food's coming in. And uh, we uh, have motion, motion to adjourn. Have a second. second. Have a second, Master Murphy. Have a roll call vote, please. Master Anderson, Master Johnson, Master Murphy.